Projection sampling is a popular stochastic method for approximating a posterior distribution. It can be used to draw a sample from a target density, P, or its unnormalized equivalent, Q. In order to perform rejection sampling, we need to have a proposal distribution G with density G such that we can easily draw a realization from the distribution defined by G. Anywhere the target density is positive, G must also be positive. There has to exist a constant value M such that the importance ratio P over G is bounded by M for all values of theta. The implementation of the rejection sampling algorithm only involves a few steps. Let's say that we want to draw B samples from our target density. Step one is to draw a value theta star from G. Step two is to accept theta star as coming from our target density with probability P over MG, where P and G are evaluated at theta star. If the proposed value of theta star is accepted, continue to step three. Otherwise, return to step one and repeat the process. In step three, we return to step one as many times as necessary in order to get B samples. Here are a few tips when doing rejection sampling. First, the unnormalized density Q is almost always used instead of P. You don't have to make any changes to the algorithm except using Q instead of P. The fact that the importance ratio is bounded ensures that our acceptance probability is always less than or equal to one. Ideally, you want the bounding function M times G to be as close to the target density as possible while still remaining above it. When thinking about how to make the decision about whether a sample value theta star drawn from G should be retained, we draw a value U from a uniform zero MG theta star distribution and keep theta star if U is less than or equal to the target density evaluated at theta star. Let's do a quick example. Suppose the unnormalized density is theta times one minus theta over the interval zero one. This is actually the unnormalized version of the beta two two distribution. This is bounded by the uniform zero one density. So we can choose G to equal the uniform density over the real line. In other words, our proposal distribution G will be the uniform zero one distribution. The mode of the target density occurs at 0 0.5 and the peak of the mode occurs at 0 0.25. Thus, we pick our bounding constant M to be equal to 0 0.25. The following graphic displays the target density Q in black and the bounding function M times G in blue. We chose the bounding function M times G to intersect the target density at a single point. Let's do an example. To draw a sample from our target density, we first draw a value theta star from our proposal distribution which in this case is a uniform 0, 1. Suppose the sampled value is theta star equal to 0 0.6. We need to decide whether we should keep the proposed value. If we evaluate the bounding function m times g at 0 0.6, we get 0 0.25. If we evaluate the unnormalized target density at 0 0.6, we get 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 equal to 0.24. To make our decision, we draw u from a uniform 0, 0 0.25 distribution where the 0 0.25 comes from the bounding function evaluated at theta star equal to 0 0.6. If the value of u we draw is less than 0 0.24, which is the value of the unnormalized target density evaluated at 0 0.6, then we accept the value of theta star. If we don't accept, then we start the process again by drawing a new value of theta star from our proposal distribution. Let's do some more examples with pictures. In this graphic, we have the target density and bounding function like before. We draw a theta star equal to 0 0.266 from our proposal distribution. If we evaluate the bounding function at theta star equal to 0 0.266, we get 0 0.25. So we draw u from a uniform 0, 0 0.25 distribution and get u equal to 0 0.093. If we evaluate the target density at 0 0.93, we get 0 0.195. Since u is less than 0 0.195, we accept the proposed value of theta. The location of theta star is shown by the vertical ray line. The value of theta star u is shown by the black dot. Since the dot is below the target density shown by the black line, we accept the value of theta star proposed. Let's do a second example. We draw a new theta star from our proposal distribution. 
This time we get 0 0.185. Similar to before, we draw a value u from a uniform 0, 0 0.25 distribution since our bounding function is constant. This time we get u equal to 0 0.176. However, in contrast to last time, if we evaluate the target density at theta star, we get 0 0.151. Since u equal to 1.76 is greater than 0.151, we reject the proposed value of theta star. We will need to repeat this process to get a sample from our target distribution. Notice that this time, the value of theta star u is above the target density, which is why we rejected it. In this slide, we've continued the same process as before, keeping track of when we reject the proposed value of theta star and the accepted values of theta star. Notice that any time the point theta star u is below the target density, we retain the proposed value. Any time the point theta star u is above the target density, we reject the proposed value. 